In this video I find out how to reduce lag when using GeForce Now to play games like Fortnite. Coming up! Okay, so there are a few different methods of doing this. I'm going to walk you through quite a different couple of steps that you can take to reduce the lag when playing games like Fortnite in GeForce Now. So, at the moment we're in the browser based version of GeForce Now. If you go to the menu, you go to settings and go to stream quality and server location. Now normally server location is set to auto. What you want to do is find the location that's nearest to you and use that. So for example for me, EU West is the closest server to me. So it just makes sense to limit the amount that it's actually searching for. Then you can change your stream quality. Depending on what you're running, you'll see more options in the actual app of GeForce Now and I'll walk you through that in a minute. But on the browser based version, you can either pick between balanced and custom. I would double check what your internet speeds are. Mine are quite high, but I do have mine only set to 35 megabytes of bitrate, which isn't really now really how you calculate bitrate, but anyway, let's not get into that. I've also got my resolution set to 1920 by 1080 and the frames per second is at 60 frames per second. Now it's a bit of a confusion at this moment to know what we're actually getting when it comes to FPS but GeForce Now states that we're only getting 60 frames per second at the most whereas with games like Fortnite you can push it further and it will show you if you go to your settings and show FPS that you can actually get up to 120 FPS if not more I'm gonna walk you through that as well but that is one of the settings that we can sort as well to make it to make Fortnite run better anyway but these are my settings it does depend on what your internet connection is and I can walk you through that in a second when we load up the app version which you can install by going to the link in the description below to the download page which you're either using a PC or a Mac just depending or download the app on your phone obviously and play it on your phone. The browser is still in beta so there are some things missing from it and there are chances of the lag being worse in the browser. I've noticed that sometimes it'll either lag slightly or we'll have some screen tearing of sorts just dependent on what or what your internet connection is like so, or who is using it at the time. Like I said, we'll go through those in a minute. If we load up the actual app, which I have already downloaded, we go to the menu again, go to settings, and as you can see, we've got quite a few more options here. And you can also test your network. If you test your network and find out what settings you should be or should be expecting, this could help you decide then what is what you need to set below. So I could get 50 if I wanted, but I've just limited it just to reduce the strain a little bit. It's recommended that you need at least 15, so I've kind of gone into the middle of that. Again, with this, you can select more of your stream quality options. So if you go to custom again, you can select your Mac bit rate, your resolution, your frame rate, but then you can also adjust for poor network conditions. I have that ticked. I think it's actually quite a good idea just to just to balance it out a little bit. But I also have VSync switched off. Now VSync is great, don't get me wrong, but it does reduce frames per second and we're trying to get as much as we can not that we're necessarily going to see it but it will improve lag so i would definitely if you're using the app tick that off but the next things you can change especially with games like fortnite is actually going into the game itself but this is one of the big suggestions I would make. Don't use the browser for now until it comes out of beta. I would use the app where it's possible. If it's not possible, it still is okay to play in the browser. But you won't get as good a quality stream as you will from the app. Things you can do, for example, if you're using Chrome, you can use incognito mode. If you are using Chrome, 
switch some of your extensions off because they can interfere with I would just get rid of them all well switch them all off while playing they can help just take the strain off the browser itself the browser does take quite a bit of your system to run it depending on your system which is why I suggest downloading the app okay so when you're in the main screen on Fortnite you need to go to the menu again you need to go to settings and these are the settings I would recommend now frame rate limit I have set to 120 this is because a lot of the other streaming services such as Stadia run the games in the cloud at 120 FPS but you actually only see 60 and I know they called it like a negative latency thing but it does sort of make sense to have it running quicker in the cloud than it does on your actual computer it just it seems to make things a lot smoother now graphical quality just depends on your internet connection again if you haven't got such a good internet connection I would suggest switching a lot of these down to low or off shadows I'd switch off anti-aliasing I have as high but again it is personal preferences on some of these but reducing the amount of information that it's having to beam to you is is better if you can if you've got problems with your internet connection if we go into things like adva advanced graphics vsync needs to be switched off as we see it says vsync enabling vsync eliminates screen tearing by always rendering a present and full frame disabling vsync can give you higher frame rates and better input responses now what I did notice when I turned this off when running in the browser version there was a bit of screen tearing whereas when you were running on the app again no problem I would suggest the app you want to turn motion blur off Blech. Um, <laughs> you want to show your FPS you want to put rendering mode I found DirectX 12 bit air works perfectly fine allow multi-threaded rendering now multi-threaded rendering splits drawing work, work across multi-threaded which can dramatically improve performance on multi-core processors this can cause hitches and low FPS on weaker hardware again we're we're trying to get as good a FPS in the cloud so we get a better less or less lag use um gpu crash debugging switch it off latency markers switch it off uh, nvidia reflex low latency on plus boost that that is an important one again nvidia reflex low latency reduces system latency in gpu bound scenarios required it requires an nvidia video card which i mean we're using nvidia geforce now so if they're using something else there's problems <laughs> but have that on plus boost and then apply your settings so there are two software related things you can do you can like i say change some of the settings in the browser version but if you download the app and not only will it run smoother even if you don't change any settings but it will run smoother anyway then you obviously you can change some things in Fortnite as well I would again switch vsync off <laughs> the next few steps are in this document here that I'm going to link to in the description down below as well there are certain things you can do to improve latency from your side so your connection you can make sure preferably being hardwired into your system so if you've got a laptop that doesn't have an ethernet connection you can buy USB C or USB A to ethernet and connect that way but if you want to be completely wireless and you want to use your Wi-Fi make sure you are using your 5G network on your Wi-Fi if you don't have that on your Wi-Fi unless you've got Wi-Fi 6 don't expect much unfortunately as they say here they state that they require 15 megabytes and recommend 50 megabytes if you go to speedtest.net you can find out exactly your speed that you're running 
depending on the router that you've got, if you're using something like a Netgear, it might potentially have QoS switched on. Now you would need to go into your router's firmware to switch that off. The best way to find this out is on the router itself, should have an IP address, you would type that in. Then for admin and password, usually it's admin and password, but or admin 1234. It depends on how your router is being set up, you would need to contact your internet service provider to find that information out if you don't know it. So. If you, if you do have Netgear or, or similar and you do have that, you need to switch that off. It will help. Other things you can do in your router's firmware. These are really good steps anyway, even if you were playing Fortnite on your PS4 or PS5 or Xbox, is port forwarding. So, for a while, GeForce Now didn't use fixed ports, but now they do, which means you can go into port forwarding go to your settings all you have to do is find out the devices IP and then type in for the inbound 49003 and then for the outbound 49006 there are loads of videos online to walk you through port forwarding this would be a completely different video if you want to see that please comment down below but it does help free the parts up which makes everything run a little bit better. Don't use a VPN, no matter what people tell you, this is not a good idea. Think of it this way, it's coming from the cloud to one network, then down to your network, not great. You can also, in your router's firmware, take a look at the channel that your Wi-Fi is currently on. Normally it will be set to a certain amount, but if you download certain apps, I will put in the description down below, like Wi-Fi Analyzer, you can actually check the channel you're using and you can check what other people in your area are using. If there are a lot of people using, say, channel 1, you would want to move to channel 11, which would make it a lot better for your Wi-Fi for the rest of the house as well as GeForce Now. Other things you can look at are firewalls, which might be blocking certain things, but like I say, if you download the app, you will get a notification that pops up asking you to allow access to it which then frees up any security issues that might have so the big free takeaways i would suggest are making sure you're hardwired if you can if you're not hardwired make sure you're on a 5g network try changing some of the software settings and look into port forwarding that will this will really help you out in fact, it helped me out when I was using Stadia for the first time because I had issues with one of my older computers having problems and I put port forwarding on that computer from the router. It worked fine, no problems. If this video was helpful, please give us a like. Comment down below again any issues you have or if it works. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel and tick that notification bell because there's going to be more stuff coming related to GeForce now especially. Thank you very much guys for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.